Good morning, everybody. This is Casey Krolchek, and you're listening to 90.1 KUPS The Sound. We've got a great show lined up for you here today. We're going to be ta- the topic for today is Res Life. I have Nolan Yaz in here with me today. He's the resident director for a couple of the dorms up on North Cloud. Which, which dorms are you? Uh... I have Anderson, Langdon, Schiff, and Harrington. Okay, cool. Well, we're just going to start out with how we got to where we are right now. Every RD, every RA has a story of how they got into res life. So, Nolan, if you want, if you want to start out, like I'd, I'd love to hear how you got into this profession. I'd have to say I think it started as an undergraduate student. Um, when I was um, in undergrad, I was actually afraid to apply to be an RA, um, partially because I was afraid of whether or not I'd be able to like enforce policy and deal with the conduct side of things. I liked like the community building component, but the conduct side kind of mm-hmm. frightened me. And so I actually didn't turn my application in on time. But one of the people um, that was in charge of the process, one of the area coordinators at my undergrad, um, Nikki Henshaw, she saw me and she's, she's like, um, where's your application? And I was like, well, and I kept going back and forth about why I didn't turn it in. And she's like, no, no, you're turning it in. I was like, well, I don't have it. So she hand delivered an application to me and took it <laughs> a week and a half late. And had she not done that, I don't think I would have ever got into res life. And then from there, it's just, I've been passionate about it ever since. Well, talk about an influential character, right? Right. Yeah, so what, what was your first year like in a dorm? I mean, not necessarily as, as, an, as an RA, but what was your impression of re- res life? Like you said, you had reservations about conduct, and I know that's one of the most difficult parts of my job because I'm an RA up in Todd Fibbs. Yeah, I think for me, um, the, my first year I lived in a building that was kind of wild. It was all first year students and there was always a lot going on. And part of the reason I had been interested in becoming an RA is because our floor was crazy all the time and it was partially because the RAs didn't do anything to make sure that the building was not going insane. And so that was part of why I was interested, but at the same time I didn't know if I'd be able to deal with how crazy the buildings can be at times. So I was hesitant, so I don't know. Yeah, I get you. Well, I I came from a totally different perspective. I've I've had a lot of people say that RAs are either hired because they love because well they they often get hired when they didn't like their res, their res life experience, and that was kind of my, and that was kind of mine. I went through my freshman year and didn't make too many connections with my hallway. There were the there were the rooms right ad- adjacent to mine that worked out really well and had a great time with those guys. But for the most part, the hall didn't gel so well. Our RA wasn't there that much, and it never really, it never really ended up working out. And so, I ended up becoming kind of lonely. Like my hallway was kind of the opposite of yours. It wasn't wild and crazy. It was dead silent, almost every single time you walked into the hallway. And so, I guess my intention when I went into the job was that I want to make this place a home. I don't want students to come back to a place that's silent and dead and you just open up your open up your door you you close it and then you kind of stay inside your cell until the morning when classes start again i didn't want that to happen for other students and that in a, in a way i almost got to kind of have try number two with a freshman dorm and i have a wonderful hallway now in todd fibs we've been really been really close we've gelled a lot and i, I i've i've tried to be, i've tried to be there for them and i think they've been there for me so that's been the really fun part for me is kind of trying to is turning around, turning that experience that I had my freshman year that wasn't as positive, and making it something that people really love. And so, I, I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to speak for the residents themselves, but the the feedback I, I've received has been good so far. Well, I think you're right. I think two of the main reasons people go into res life are either because they had an amazing RA and they want to duplicate the experience they had, or they had a not so positive experience and they might not have liked their community and they want to try and find a way to make community better for those that are coming in after them. Yeah. Like, like I said, I, I had people say, oh, yeah, I've heard about people like you. They hated, the, they hated their <laughs> freshman year. So now they want to become RAs so they can make it better. And I, I don't think it's necessarily that. I think when you go through the process of, the, I mean, there's the, there's the individual interview and then there's the group interview to before, before you're hired as, a, as an RA or an RCC. And the pattern that I've seen is you either... It's just that you see the value in res life. If it, if it impacted you in a really negative way, you feel that and you understand what that means. And so you have, I think you have more of an ability to see what needs to happen in order to make that experience really positive. And on the flip side, if you had 
a, a positive experience like you were talking about you want to replicate it you've also been able to see that and you want and you know what you want it to look like right so i just think people if you're going to if you're going to be an ra or an rcc or if you're going to go into a career as an rd like nolan you have to be able to see the value in in res life i'd agree so that's been that's that's been the pattern that i've seen but uh yeah just to give listeners a better idea of what of what you do on a daily and weekly basis, what what kind of duties and responsibilities do you have? I think there's a, lo- a lot of different components that go into being an RD. Um, I think here, especially at a smaller institution where um, we you know have a little bit more of a larger role than some of the uh, larger institutions where they have more professional staff that can cover a variety of roles. But I'd say some of the key components are on top of meeting with my staff, not only one on one but as a whole team each week. Um, a lot of my time is spent um, talking with students just about concerns they might have, as well as um, conduct hearings have been big so far this year, too. Um, and while that sounds like a negative thing, I think they're a great opportunity to have like educational conversations and hope that students are getting something out of them in a positive manner. Um, so those are some of the big components, I'd say, but also just there's a lot of little paperwork and details that go into things, but I mean, it's all enjoyable. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. Well, from my side, on a daily basis, I, th- I think the most important thing that I can do is just be there among my residents. And so, whether that's the intramural soccer team that we got that we have going, or going down to the farmers market on, on Saturday mornings, or like last night, we put together a staff wa- a staff a staff uh, program for the entire dorm where we, where we put on a, f- a floor course meal where we had a different course on each floor of the dorm and it was fun it was fun for me because i could see the impact that i was having because you have students everywhere carrying around plates of food going from garden level all the way up to the fourth floor and then everywhere in between getting food talking with each other and getting together and that's the value that i see in my job is that i can i can be a force that really gets people out and yeah, that's that's what that's what I really enjoy about it. I love being that that force that can get people out and can motivate people to interact and to engage on campus. Yeah, I think that's a big component of it, and I think that that falls back onto the RD's position too, in a little bit because for each program one RA might work on or the whole staff team works on, we're kind of working behind the scenes to help you all get there and help you have those conversations and then processing your paperwork afterwards and the shopping and things. So. I think it's exciting for us to see your programs be successful and to see you all have that like turnout that you were talking about from last night. All right, awesome. We're going to take a quick break. You're listening to Across Campus on 90.1 KUPS, The Sound. All right, we're back on Across Campus. I'm Casey Krolchek, your host. I'm here with Nolan Yaz today, and we're talking about res life here on, on campus at the University of Puget Sound. So we're going to start with the next set of questions and ideas here but uh nolan what is the most rewarding part of your job what do you what makes you want to go to work each day and what makes you want to do this as a career i think for me part of what it starts with is um i think as an undergraduate student i was i entered um a little lost i well i was in my mind i wasn't lost i was dead set on becoming an accountant and getting out in three years being done being an accountant and I had this plan and I was driven and it was nothing was going to deter me from it and that slowly broke down and as I look back at that I laugh at like the plan I had and how I thought that I knew everything and everything was set in my mind and I think for me college was a time where I really figured out who I was and found out so much about myself and what I wanted to do with my life and so having those experiences and then being able to work with students and have those conversations with students and my staff members, too, about what they're interested in, what they want to do, and helping them start to find that sense of balance and figure out where their life might take them is just super rewarding. Just the fact that you can have those conversations and be a part of that experience while people are going through like really difficult life situations and trying to process, you know, is this something I'm interested in? What do I really want to do? Is this something that I'm doing just because my parents told me to do it? And being a part of those conversations and really being there as it clicks and people start to figure out where they want to go and what they want to do is, I think, for me, a big driving force and why I continue to come to work. Well, for me... There was one point where I was sitting in the lounge with a bunch of my residents. We had just watched a movie. We were all hanging out together, having having a great time. And uh, one of my re- one of my residents said to me, 
Casey, you'll love this. I'm just, I'm just gonna say it. This feels like home, and that from that for me, since that has been the objective of my job, make this place a home for my students. I was really excited to hear that from one of my residents, and you know, that that was that was my entire strategy going into this. So I, I had the opportunity to travel this summer, and I brought back prayer flags from India, and this specific prayer flag. It's called the Lung Ta, the wind, wind horse, and it stands for good luck and safe travels. And so I brought those back with the intention of putting those up above all the doors in, in my hallway. And that's what, I, that's what I did. And so when I had my first hallway meeting with all my residents, and I was able to tell them, hey, you guys, I brought this back for you, and it's my wish to you that you have safe travels and good luck through this first year at the University of Puget Sound. And I could tell that it meant a lot to them, and it meant a lot to me, that it meant a lot to them. And so we've just been playing off each other. I think the, be the, the better that I do my job, the more enjoyable it is for them, and that makes my job even easier. So as, as the year has gone on, they've, they've started to kind of almost run the hallway themselves, and I've, and I've been able to step back a little bit, which has been great for me. For, first, just because... I mean, I don't have to be thinking all the time about, like, are, are, are people engaging? Are they getting out in, into the academic community? Are they talking with each other when I'm not trying myself to get them to do that? And we, we had two Jewish students in our hallway put on a Rosh Hashanah event. They had apples and honey in the hallway. And they also put together a FIFA, tur a FIFA tournament just the, with, the with the video game. Mm -hmm. And they've got a league going with that. And... So, stuff like that is happening all the time where I don't necessarily have to think about what I, what needs to be done and they're just kind of doing it themselves so that's been one of the most rewarding parts of my job just seeing my hopes and efforts materializing into uh, into in, in, into different events and programs that are going on the hallway that I, that I don't even have to do myself so Right, I think that's one of like the major perks in Res Life is when you can you can truly see like the fruit of your labor coming together a lot of the time when you see that community and when you have that buy-in and when residents truly feel at home, not only will they you know create programs and do things on their own, but they also take care of the community. They take care of and support one another. And I think the RA's role at that time can like sl slide down a little bit in terms of you know you guys have a less lack not a, a less active role at times and that's not the right word I'm looking for but you know what I mean like yeah. you can take a slight step back because those residents really know what they're after and they're working together to make that community what it needs to be for them yeah like it's, it's a sustainable community and they'll they'll keep it going whether you're there or not so right. you know you've done your job when that community has been established so that's yeah that's been the best part of my job so far so I'm enjoying it and uh, I hope I hope it'll stay that way for the rest of this semester and next so and uh moving on what would you say is the most nolan what's the most challenging part of your job oh, i i always hate this question um i think for me one of the the challenging parts at times is is handling conduct situations because while i see them as a great benefit for like educational outcomes in terms of helping have those conversations about how can we make sure that you're not in this position again and trying to change the situation so that way you can find a way to make it a positive life choice in the future. I think um, I always struggle with sometimes those conversations because it can be challenging to sit down and be focusing on the negative behavior. But I think for me, the thing that I always had to separate, because when I first was an RA, I would get very frustrated and I would be mad at the resident. And I started to realize that you have to separate the behavior from the person and talk about the behavior as the concern, because it's not the person. The person is a great person. You just need to focus on the behavior of what happened and talk about that incident and talk about ways that you can make it a positive choice the next time. So I think conduct can be challenging. Yeah. I'd say I'd say it's similar from my side. Just the normal day to day uh, rules and, and that you have to that, that you have to uphold in the hallway. Just as, as simple as, as noise violations. I mean, the the, mo the most difficult part about my hallway is kind of a result of what I've tried to create. There are a lot of people, and they love to talk to each other, and they love to interact. But that manifests itself <laughs> late at night, sometimes out in the hallways, and when people are trying to sleep, and. I can be I can I kind of get into this weird conflicted position where I want to be, I I am, I am great friends with them 
But at the same time, you also have to be the policy enforcer, right. which means you have to always be thinking about, okay, there are probably people sleeping right now. Yeah, I'm having a great time talking with you guys, but I also have a responsibility to take care of everybody else too. And so I feel like I can kind of be the, anno the annoying hard-ass hard RA who has to, has to deal with stuff like that. Like, come on, come on guys, it's, a it's after 10, close your doors, turn the music down, go into the lounge. And you, you have to do that over and over and over. And some, sometimes, sometimes you, you, you try to lighten it up a little bit, like, hey, guys, realize what time it is? It's, it's quiet time, time to move down the lounge. And you, and, you try to, and you try to put some sort of enthusiastic approach like that. And sometimes it works. Other, pe other times people kind of laugh and go, <laughs> that's funny, Casey. And then, then, then they go back to doing whatever they were before. And then you put on a really serious face. No, I'm actually serious. You need to go into the lounge or shut your door or be quiet <laughs> one of those things one, one of those things you have to do it and we have to we have to tone it down and there have been there have been, been been several occasions where somebody goes wait are you are you being serious right now like, yeah yeah i am being serious i have to deal with that right i think it's i think it is challenging especially like quiet hours is one of the ones that's always more of a challenge because it's such a delicate balance because it's like you want everybody to be interacting like you're saying but then it's at the same time, like, at what expense to others and how much disturbance are you causing mm -hmm. by running around the hallway at 11 o'clock at night <laughs> screaming, but, you know. I guess the, the other part of my job that I've found the least enjoyable, the most difficult thing I think any RA or any RD has to deal with, uh, I mean, the, the really serious conduct reports, uh, whether they're in relation to alcohol or smoking, those are really tough on us. And I actually just had my first occasion this last weekend where I had to do a communication report for alcohol. And it's not something that I'm comfortable with. And it's not something that I feel good about. It's just kind of something I have to do. Like, I was, you, you have to write down names and uh, student ID numbers. And as I'm doing that, my, my hands are shaking. So then I thought, okay, I have to try and hide that. So I, I kind of set my notepad down on my knee to try and give myself a steady surface, but then realized my knees were shaking too. And... Then I just had to go, well, we'll shoot. <laughs> and so I had to pull out the chair to the desk and just sit down and, and write down everything I need to. But that's kind of, that's how it is for a lot a lot of RAs. And I, I, I had a great talk with an with the RA on the third floor of my building, Hannah Whistler, and she she kinda of said the same thing. It doesn't matter she she's in this for her second or third year now, I can't remember which, but kind of the same situation. Like she every every single time she has to go through a conduct report, it's or a, a, something related to conduct. It's really nerve-wracking, and it's incredibly uncomfortable. Well, I, I I would have to say my first time, I seriously couldn't hold my pen and paper still either, and um, I didn't have the ability to just sit down at a desk and write. And so when the residents were like, what's wrong? Like, are you okay? Like, when I was an RA, and I was, like, trying to hold the paper still. So I was like, I'm hypoglycemic. I didn't eat today. I'm shaky because <laughs> I didn't eat today. And so I tried to push it off as that. But it really was nerves because... The same thing I'll tell students when I meet with them for conduct is like, you know, what position did you put the RA in by having this going on in your room? And they always look at me like, what do you mean? And so I always try and explain to them, you all don't enjoy the conduct side of things. You don't, you didn't sign up to be like, I'm here to bust your party. Like <laughs> nobody joins res life to bust parties. True, truly we don't. But at the same time, we do have to enforce policy and take care of business. But how can you do that in a manner that's comfortable? It's never really that comfortable because you don't want to go in and be like, I'm here to stop everything you're doing, but gotta, gotta do it at times. Yep, there are multiple dimensions of the job. Sometimes they conflict, but that's just kind of what we have to deal with. We're going to take a quick break. You're listening to Across Campus with Casey Krolchuk and my guest, Nolan Yaz. We'll be back in just a few minutes. Steven. Who said that? Me, down here. Ugh, what are you, a yellow booger? I'm a banana slug, Steven. What are you doing in my room? I'm your sense of adventure. It's been a long time since we've had an adventure in the forest. Mom took me to the forest last year. I'm a slug, Steven. It took me a long time to get here. You're right. I should get out. Yeah, the forest is not that far away. Hey, Mom! Come to the forest where the more adventurous you lives. Check out discovertheforest.org for cool places nearby. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service and the Ad Council. The Sound. That was one of the more interesting advertisements that I've had to play in a long time. Really enjoyed that one. I'll have to pull that out in the future. You're listening to Across Campus on 90.1 KUPS, The Sound. I am Casey Krolchek, and my guest, Nolan Yaz, here, is here with me today, and we're talking about ResLife. 
here at the University of Puget Sound. And so jumping into our next portion of the show here, uh, Nolan, where do you see your career with Res Life going? What's what's happening within the next couple of years, and wh where do you see it going in the future? I think for me, um, well, one of the things is residence life is just one area in a larger field of what's called student affairs. Um, I know a lot of people haven't heard about that when they first come to campus. Let's be real. I didn't know about it when I first entered. I mean, I don't think anybody enters college going, I want to be you know, this or this in student affairs, because most people don't even know what the field's about. Mm -hmm. um, but student affairs covers a lot of areas. On this campus, it covers things from, you know, career and, uh, career services to the dean of students office to uh, student activities. You know, the list goes on and on, and res life is just one of those many areas. So for me, I, I think I see myself staying in res life for at least, you know, three to five more years. I, I do enjoy res life a great deal. But from there, um, I'm not sure what path I want to go down. Um, my eventual goal would be to hopefully work to the level of being a vice president for student affairs or a dean of students. Um, but in the middle there, I'm not sure where I want to head. I think one area I'm interested in is going down the path of working with in student conduct, mm -hmm. but I'm also interested in working with career services because um, in grad school I taught a career exploration course um, for three semesters actually um, and enjoyed that a great deal. So I have a you lot got, of you got to teach. Yeah, we got to teach. Um, so it was a lot of fun. It was part of my grad assistantship. Is okay. so yeah, it was my practicum. Is I taught a course with first year students who were kind of lost and exploring and what do we we want to do and so having those conversations and then getting to provide them a stru structured environment to explore what they're interested in was absolutely amazing and it worked well for me because I ended up being an edu um, elementary education major so it gave me some classroom time on top yeah. of working in res life yeah, I think res life is working on a program right now for sophomores we, we talked about that at our last staff meeting I think I think it's going to be it's going to be happening in January sometime right after we get back from winter break. Uh, I think I think it's kind of along the same lines, though, where we're kind of trying to help sophomores. Like they're they're in their second. We're in our second year now, but uh, what what are we doing? Where are we going after that? What kind of careers are we thinking about? What are we thinking about for majors? But that all has to be sorted out your sophomore year. So it kind of, it kind of sounds like it's along those. Right. Same lines. Right. A lot of second year students, I mean, it's it's across the nation that there's this thing called the sophomore slump that a lot of universities will use that term. And it's basically, you know, the first year we support students with so many amazing programs. They have orientation. And then kind of that second year, we expect you to just be a part of the campus and know what to do. And that can be a really challenging time because you, you lose a lot of that support you had the first year and then trying during the second year to really nail down what major career path and mm -hmm. things is challenging for students. And so finding that support and really having that as a structured m way is part of the goal of, you know, the sophomore committee that's working on that um, possible retreat in January and such. Yeah, it was it was funny for me when I first heard that they were putting together a project like this for, because I think, I think in a way I've kind of delayed that process for myself a little bit because I've jumped back into a freshman dorm and there's lots of programming and I'm kind of making it up as we go. Right. And so I'm kind of giving myself that environment to work in. But I have heard from a lot of other sophomore friends of mine that, you know, they're, they're moving off campus, they don't have all those programs set in stone, and they kind of have to figure out everything for themselves, whether it's meal plans or clubs, the, the cl student clubs that they're going to be in, mm -hmm. or a any part of... Puget Sound, they kind of have to figure out for themselves from that point on, unless unless you're as lucky as me and you've got a job in Res Life and Todd Fibbs. <laughs> right, yep. All right, well, I guess moving on to, uh, from, from, my, from my side of the career question, uh, I, I had a resident ask me just the other day, so Casey, are you, are you, are you planning on being an RA next year? Mm -hmm. And... <laughs> My my answer right off the bat was nope. <laughs> this is a this is a one time gig. I'm not going to be able to replicate this again. And you know, at first, everybody laughed and they thought I was making a joke about how like they were you know I've got such bad residents. Of course, I wouldn't go into the, <laughs> into this again. But it wasn't it was it wasn't that. And I wasn't making a joke. But it wasn't and it was not because I ha I have bad residents. I have the best residents in the world. And I think that's part of the reason why why I'm totally comfortable with saying like one year on the Res Life staff, I'm good. I've, and I, and, I, and I know a lot of other RAs feel this way, you put a lot of your own time, your personality, and just so much energy and emotional energy into this group. And it's a lot of, a lot of yourself invested in your hallway and, and in your dorm. 
and it kind of depends on how you approach the job. Some people, some people can do it for multiple years, and others are like me, where you can't. Where I, maybe I, I wouldn't say that I couldn't, but I don't think that I could do as good of a job two or three years in a row as I can with this one group here. I'm kind of giving all that I've got. To, I've, I'm giving all that I've got to this one group. I've become really close with them, and the idea of having to do that twice. I don't. I don't know. I that doesn't. That doesn't sound like really all that great to me right now. I kind of see myself n- next year. I'm going. I'm going to go and study abroad. Um, and in and in many ways, I feel like I'm a lot closer to this group of freshmen and my ha- and my hallmates than I am to a lot. I mean, most if not all of my sophomore colleagues in my class. And that's just because I've had all these really deep personal interactions with all these students. And so when when I was asked like do you, are you going to be an RA again next year the the answer like r- right away was probably not yeah i think it is challenging um i take it from somebody that's in i think this is my 5th year in res life um 3 years is well 2 wait 2 years as an RA 2 years running buildings in grad school and now here as a professional staff member um it is challenging because you can never duplicate a building. You can never duplicate a floor. Um, each year, you come in, comes with a transition of staff teams, comes with a transition of um, supervisors. A lot of times, if you change areas or if the mm-hmm. you know professional staff changes out, and it 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 can be draining at first. But I think for me, there's always a new energy with a new group that comes in, and you have to be able to find that though, because otherwise, there there are folks that struggle in like this is not like last year. Well. It it's never gonna be the same. You can't keep duplicating the same year. Like, try and Absolutely, try again. Yeah. You just won't. You have a different population of students and a different team you're working with. And what is it about you and your personality that allows you to come back to it every year? Like, I, I mean, I I can't imagine coming back and trying to do this again. But you, this is your fifth year in a row now. What is it that keeps you coming back? And how how do you adjust to each new group that comes in? I think one of the big things is I definitely am the type of person that likes constant change and challenge. And so these transitions and change is something that I love. And that's part of the reason actually I went into the field is I love the challenge and the change. And no day is exactly predictable. I mean, you can say that you've been through everything in rest life and then oh, something new comes up and you're like, wow, I never thought that would happen. (laughs) So that is something that keeps me going. And I think the other thing is, is the the new group of students and the new staff team that you're going to be working with there's going to be that possibility to have those conversations and to work with them in that capacity of trying to find a way to help them find their passions and figure out what they're doing and kind of what their goals are why they're you know here why they're at this university and so I think for me that's part of what brings me back is because I know that those conversations are going to continue and that like that support will be needed still yeah and even though I don't see myself even though I don't see myself going into the field my, in the future, and I don't think I'm going to be on the Res Life staff again, <laughs> uh, it's been tremendously beneficial to me. And if you're if you're thinking about becoming an RA, definitely fill out an application and check it check it out because it, it's a it's a phenomenal opportunity. And you see a side to campus that you didn't even know really existed. We kind of have our Res Life kind of ha- kind of has its own little bubble, and we just kind of have this different perspective of campus and. We, we read some really interesting articles about uh, the RA bubble mm-hmm. and what exactly that means. First first off, just like being in a, in a small group, and then also that, or, or I think our thing is also like referred to as the fishbowl. Yep, the fishbowl. In that everybody always sees you, your actions are magnified 5, 10, 20 fold, and everybody just sees you and they, and they notice what you do. And that kind of, in a lot of ways, that sets the tone for the rest of campus. Yeah, I mean, you've got one RA with their eyes on 20 to 30 residents, you know, in their own hallway, or one RA on call for a building of, you know, 160 people on any given night, but then you've got 160 people looking at one RA, and so that's that fishbowl principle of, like, anything that you do is seen in a different light, and, you know, you're expected to be holding yourself to that role model higher standard, and it can be challenging, And but at the same time, I, I do think it's a unique experience that, a lot of people should at least give a try or apply and see if it's you know something i would encourage them to you know if they're interested in applying sh- talk with their ra try and shadow their ra have a conversation with their resident director i mean there's four of us on campus and we love talking about people uh, to people about their interest in res life yeah 
Or you can be like one of my residents and help out with programming. And like last night, that meant helping cook, helping clean up. That's a really great way to get get involved with the Res Life staff, and it's one, and it's one way that we really appreciate. So, everybody from my floor and on other floors as well that helped out with the dinner last night, thank you very much. <laughs> Just give you a quick shout out on the radio here. But uh, yeah, I, I actually f- felt that fi- that fishbowl effect uh, pretty strongly th- this this last weekend. Like like I said, I had that first conduct report that I had to do, and the very ne- the very next day. I had a soccer tournament, went up with a bunch of guys on the club soccer team to Everett, and we played in an indoor tournament. And one of the, one of the first things that one of the guys says to me, he's, he's one of the other freshmen in my dorm, I'm like, hey, Casey, I heard, heard you busted a couple of guys on our floor the other night. It's like, wow, we're, only, we're not even 12 hours removed, and, <laughs> and it's, it's already getting around. That's fantastic. Yeah, it's it's amazing how fast that word travels, and I'll have residents come up to me and be like, did such and such happen this weekend? And I'm like, how did you hear about this? You don't even live in that building. So it, it, it it's challenging because, I mean, while we don't want things to be spread and things, the r- residents do talk, so... <laughs> Absolutely. We're going to take a quick break. You're listening to Across Campus. I'm the host, Casey Krolchek, and my guest here in the studio today is Nolan Yaz. We'll be back in a couple minutes. You're listening to 90.1 KUPS, The Sound. We're back on Across the Sound on 90.1 KUPS. I'm Casey Kralchek. Today in the, on, in the studio, we've got Nolan Yaz. He's my guest today, and we're talking about res life. So we're going to be moving into our final portion of the show here. Uh, right at the end of RA training, we did an exercise called Life on Campus, and it was staged in Anderson Langdon, the one of the re- one of the residence halls on campus. And in each room, there's a different c- scenario that an RA might encounter during their t- during during their time on staff. And Nolan, you wrote a lot of a lot of the scripts and a lot of the and you kind of designed a lot of those rooms. So what what can you tell us about those? So life on campus is something that's consistent. Um, a lot of other universities, if you hear talk to RAs at other institutions, they'll talk about um, it as b- behind closed doors. Um, we use the name life on campus here just by choice. But um, with that, um, life on campus, the goal is, like you're saying, to kind of give RAs the ability and like chance to confront situations they might encounter on any typical night on duty slash there is no typical night on call, and so we're trying to introduce you all to that concept and let you see some of the challenges and mixes. And it's hard because, like, you want to be able to cover everything, but A, you never know exactly what will happen in any given situation because each situation is so unique, and B, we just don't have the time to, like, <laughs> go through all the possible things that you might encounter. So we try and give some, you know, the staff a kind of like a typical in terms of, like, some of the things you'll encounter on a more regular basis. So you, of course, have scenes like oh you know one where you're how to confront a situation that involves alcohol how to confront one that where you know someone who might be choosing to partake in smoking um illegal substances in the building versus you know um situations where there might have been a student who is experiencing you know struggles in terms of their studies and they don't know what to do or how to figure out to navigate that path um Some of the other scenes involved, you know, a student that might be experiencing some feelings of depression and might be feeling suicidal. Um, Different situations that, while they're challenging, um, are realistic that an RA might actually have to confront them. Yeah, during, uh, I got got an email from my RD, Jenny Chaddick, at one point, and she just said she wanted me to do an indirect check-in with one of my residents, and it was odd as as I was reading her email I was I was thinking this sounds so much like life on campus, and so you guys did a really great job with that. Yeah, I think for I think the funny part is is like when Jenny and I were rewriting because Jenny and I worked on a lot of the the scenes is because we were working on trying to make sure that they fit the University of Puget Sound kind of the things that have happened here as well as just trying to make them is as specific and beneficial as possible because we wanted to make sure that they re- you, the RAs really in ha- the RCCs really got something out of them. And so as we rewrote them, I used, you know, scripts that I'd seen at previous institutions that I had saved and other things, but yeah, you try to tr- make it as realistic as possible because these situations do come up sadly. Um a lot of times you don't want to have 
to think that, oh, no, everything's good. All we're doing is planning programs. But the realistic side of things is, is there will be challenging situations. But the best that we can prepare you all for those is what we're hoping with life on campus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I well, I well, I participated in this during my RA training. Mm -hmm. And I was on a, a smaller team with five or six other RAs. And I, I think there were eight different rooms that we went through. Right. And so each of us took each of us took the lead on a different room, and the two that the two that I took the lead on, one ended up being a case of sexual assault, and so you had to respond to that. And then the other one that I had was suicide prevention, mm -hmm. and I mean th those were two pretty hard topics to to jump into. I mean, you, it's not uh, like like you said, it's it's those are two of those subjects where. It's not. There are situations where you. It's not that you don't want to deal with them, but you you want you want to hope with with all your heart that that's not going to come up. But the reality of your job is that it's it's a it's a possibility, and so you have to learn to deal with that. And so, right. I mean, there's a lot of stress and pressure during college, and there's a lot of things going on, and students, you know, end up in different situations that you would hope that you know they might not end up in. But the reality is, like you're saying, it can come up, and. I think that's the thing is the institution has outstanding policies and procedures outlined for how to respond to these situations. And as much as we might have talked with you and the rest of the staff teams about like, here's what you do in this type of situation. It's a whole different ballgame when you actually have to confront it. And that's part of what life on campus is all about is giving you that opportunity to have sort of a structured environment where there's members of the professional staff there to help guide you, to allow you to take that pause and help direct you and support you throughout that situation. So that way, if you you know, really, when you have to deal with that sort of thing, you have a little bit better and you're not just like, here, jump in. Like, it's a little bit more supported, at least, in life on campus. Yeah, it was a it was a fascinating exercise and it was really valuable for me because it, it made me realize that anytime that you knock on a door or anytime a resident approaches you, it could be any number of things. And... In, in 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 a lot of cases, probably something that you never prepared for, or that you or that you never even imagined, and so I, I, and I've experienced that uh, I've experienced that so far. Like when 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 you when you have to knock on a door, or when I've had a resident come up to me and say, like, Casey, you're the RA. Can can I talk with Can I talk with you for a moment? And you think back to re to, to life on campus, and okay, be ready for every be be ready for everything. And that's kind of the mentality that you take on with each case that you run into. Yeah, I have a funny story about that, actually, about never knowing what's behind a door. In undergrad, we had duty partners, because um, we had, I was in a really large building, and our building had a lot of problems at times, and so one night, there was this room, and it was so loud, and it I, they were just giggling, and just... I was dead set in my mind that they must be drinking. And so I called my duty partner because I'm like, I'm not going to knock alone because there's too many people in there. And so she comes down and we knock on the door and they open it. And it's a group of students playing board games, completely sober, playing board games, just having a good time. And I didn't even know what to do besides laugh because I went from like RA mode of like, this problem needs to stop to really they're just playing board games and i couldn't stop laughing and so my duty partner's like can you just like keep it down and we seriously just walked away because we didn't even know what to say so we went back and chatted with them and actually played a, a, a round of one of the games with them but it was just really funny because it was like you think that you're all like set you know what's going to be behind that door and then <laughs> whoops that's not what's there yep yeah we some someone from the staff team shared a story from plu it didn't happen on puget sound but uh, the ra is there i guess either do or used to have master keys to, to the different rooms in, in their hallway and there was an RA on, on call and there was really loud music coming from a room really late at night past quiet hours and so he went and knocked, went, went and knocked on the door and nobody answered and said hey this is the RA can you, can you open up the door and still no answer the music is blaring and so th this was probably, it was probably a situation where they couldn't really hear that he was knocking on the door but then said, "All right, hey, I'm. I, I have the master key, and I'm opening up the door. This is like this is your last chance for to just open up the door yourself." And still nobody opened up the door. And anyways, he put the key in, opened up the door, and walked in. And there are five football players in their underwear wrestling on the ground. And he went over and flipped the music, flipped the music off, and just said, "Quiet down." And then left the room again. <laughs> yeah, I think, well, a lot of institutions, their staff have 
master keys and we key in for health and safety purposes or when there isn't that response but it's it's not standard to find things like that <laughs> no yeah but it, it's just one of those situations that illustrate like who could ever prepare for something like that and just kind of the weird and crazy stuff that that happens on a daily basis that's that's one of the one of the things that keeps the job interesting right right ah uh, well it's been a great show we're gonna wrap it up here You've been listening to Across Campus. I'm Casey Krolchek, and you've been... I've had, I've had the opportunity to... The wonderful opportunity to have Nolan Yaz here on the show with me talking about res life on campus. We'll be back next Monday when we'll have the Black Student Union here on the radio show. Once again, you're listening to Across Campus on 90.1 KUPS, The Sound. <laughs>